Mac versus PC, Ali versus Frazier, Boxers versus Briefs. There have been some great rivalries throughout history, and today we'll be talking about another one, OLED versus QLED. Now they both have their strengths and weaknesses, but today we're going to find out which one is better for you and your room. So stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover. Now, if you've been here before, then welcome back. But if you're new here, then on this channel, we bring you the tech of entertainment. So we do unboxings, demos, comparisons, tips, and real world reviews to help you find and get the most out of the tech that entertains you. So if you're into that, then you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So on this channel, we do a lot of TV reviews. So just like last year where I did the 2018 C8 versus the Q9 FN from Samsung, comparison this year I'll be doing the C9 OLED versus the Q90R QLED from Samsung now these are both high-end 4k HDR TVs and they both have their respective strengths and weaknesses now the OLED from LG is a self emissive display so it doesn't need a backlight so it has individual control of all the pixels so it can turn on and off as it necessary while the QLED from Samsung is an LCD TV with full array local dimming. Now what that means is it has almost 500 zones which it can turn on and off to suit the picture on screen. So because of these respective technologies, one is very thin while one is pretty thick with multiple seats. But as a result, they both give you an outstanding picture. But as I said, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. So today we'll be diving into a direct comparison of the picture quality. Now in this video, we'll be comparing a bunch of the proprietary technologies that each TV has. So for the Samsung that has full array local dimming and it also has a contrast enhancer feature. So we'll be testing out what those effects have on the picture quality. And for the LG it has things like black frame insertion which helps the motion handling and dynamic tone mapping which helps it recreate a brighter scene than this TV can support natively. But if you want to check out the videos of these TVs individually then I've left links in the description and also in the card up there. Now I've put both TVs in their most accurate picture mode, so for the Samsung, that's the movie mode, while for the LG, it's cinema home. Oh, and if you're unaware, I'm also giving away a bunch of Dolby Atmos and DTSX and IMAX Enhanced demo discs, so if you are interested in that, then look in the description for links to the giveaway video. Now these will be an awesome way to test out and show off your system. Now I have both TVs connected to the Denon X4500H receiver, which I'm also reviewing, but that receiver has a bunch of HDMI 2.1 features, like auto low latency mode for gaming and also enhanced audio return channel. So I thought that was the best means to connect both the Apple TV and also the Sony UBP X800M2 Blu-ray player that I'm also reviewing. And fun fact, this is the only place on the internet where you'll see 4K HDR TV comparisons that's actually done in 4K HDR. Now, I shoot all my videos in 4K hybrid log gamma HDR and what that does is that it gives me ability, it gives me the ability to show you a lot more of the shadow and highlight detail without things clipping when the TVs get too bright. Plus, it just looks so much better. But yeah, you're welcome. So, enough of the formalities, let's get into it. So first up, I'll be showing you some scenes on both TVs at their best picture settings. Now both TVs are 65 inches, the LG C9 OLED up top and the Samsung Q90R QLED on the bottom. There's some slight differences in the picture temperature, but that can be altered to suit your preference. Off-axis viewing is not a problem for either of these televisions. Samsung has made some great strides with their panels where now if you sit off-axis, you will still have a great picture. It's also worth noting that the highlight detail that you see or don't see in the video is actually pretty representational of what I see in person.
Highlight details on the QLED tend to be overblown. If you take this scene for example, the clouds in the scene lack the detail that the LG has. If you look at the clouds in the OLED, you can see that there's a lot more definition in the clouds. But beyond that, I think this is actually the result of the OLED having more contrast than the QLED. Darks seem darker and the colors just pop that much more. The higher peak brightness of the Samsung makes it great for a brightly lit room, but one of the downsides of that is that the highlights may seem overblown, especially in a dark room. Now let's look at the effect that dynamic tone mapping has on the picture of the LG using a dark scene. As you can see, it results in a brighter overall picture while preserving highlight detail. And if we look at the picture with dynamic tone mapping on and off side by side, then we can see even better evidence of that. Now let's look at the effect that dynamic tone mapping has on a brighter scene. The Samsung wins in overall luminance output because the scene is much brighter on the QLED. This will be great again for watching in a brightly lit room, but the LG does not get as bright, especially with dynamic tone mapping off, so that's a setting that you should leave enabled. Again, here's a look at the highlight detail differences between the two. Both TVs have their brightness at the midway point, by the way. Now let's look at the effects that the Samsung picture settings have on the picture quality of the QLED. We'll be testing what effect the contrast enhancer and local dimming settings have on the picture quality. On the split screen view of the Samsung, we can see what effect the different contrast enhancer settings have on the picture quality. On the left, we have contrast enhancer set to low, while on the right we have it set to off. Setting the local dimming to high on the Samsung increases the contrast of the picture, but it also increases the overall brightness, which also has a negative effect on highlight detail. So you trade contrast for highlight detail, or vice versa, trading highlight detail for contrast. 
but I found that setting the local dimming to high and contrast enhancer to either off or low has the best effect on the picture. With local dimming set to high and contrast enhancer set to off, then we can see where the picture has contrast almost approaching the OLED, but it has a much higher overall brightness. Having the local dimming set to standard results in the picture having less contrast and appearing more flat. Now let's see how both of these TVs handle a colorful HDR movie like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. They both actually have a very nice picture. The only real differences again are differences in overall brightness and some slight differences in the color palette which wouldn't even be an issue if this was not a direct comparison. A live action movie like Mission Impossible Fallout on the other hand benefits a lot I think from the increased contrast on the LG. Especially on scenes with dark objects but brighter scenes and scenes with skin tones I think pop more on the QLED. I thought this scene in Interstellar was a great example of how these TVs handle both highlights and shadows. You can tell by how the OLED displays stars that even though they aren't as bright as the stars on the QLED, they are still there. So even though the shadows are darker than they are on the Samsung, there is no pronounced black rush. Conversely, we can see where the OLED actually has more highlight detail than on the Samsung, which was also evident in one of the earlier scenes. The QLED is an LCD TV and that means it has a backlight. And if the brightness is high in a dark room, you can actually see some haloing on bright objects on a dark background. So generally when I get questions in the comments from people asking which TVs they should get, I always take into consideration their circumstances and their room because that is a huge factor. Besides having a technology that you may like or a brand you prefer, they both have their respective strengths and weaknesses as you saw in the video. Now one of the biggest features of the Samsung is this ability to get very bright. So if you have a room that's, that doesn't have as much light control as you'd like, so it's a very bright room with the inability to get very dark, then the QLED would make more sense for you because it performs well in a highly lit environment. It has a higher peak brightness, so that's what it excels at. But the OLED isn't that far behind as you saw in the video. It can also get plenty bright, but what it excels at is actually getting very dark. So if you have a light controlled room, so you can turn off the lights and be engulfed in complete darkness, then that's where the OLED will shine. There'll be no blooming and the contrast will make the picture pop just that much more. But conversely, there are some people who, as unlikely as it may be, are still worried about the chance of burning happening on their OLED TVs. Now, I've owned the OLED TV for almost three years now, and I have not ever once experienced burning, and I game, watch movies, etc. So it's not something I'm especially worried about, and I've never babied my TV either. But be that as it may, some people are still worried about that possibility. And in that case, I say go with the QLED because then at least you'll have peace of mind. They're both great for gaming, but I'll also be creating a gaming comparison between both of them so you can see just how well they perform in gaming and what the picture quality looks like. Oh, and if you like this shirt and want to get one for yourself, then you can check out the Villa Mer store where we have this and other designs you can get. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and which TV you'll prefer. Until next time, 
This has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying peace. <laughs>